And so I'm gonna tell y'all some things to avoid so that you're not the HR director. That sucks. You might be biting off more you can chew. My grandmother used to say, baby, you gotta crawl before you walk. Remember to crawl. Sometimes that crawling takes a minute. Let me tell you something, honey. You jump on this video because you wanna know how HR directors suck. And I might be a little jaded because I'm sitting here as someone who's been an HR director, who's been an HR manager, and now I'm telling you that we suck. No, I'm here to tell you how not to suck. And so if you really want to know all the gems I'm about to toss in this thing, because don't forget you're getting it from somebody that knows best, then make sure to subscribe. Hey y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind Hey HR, and I am here to tell you exactly why HR directors suck. So the first thing that HR directors fail to do is that they make changes and they don't make them based on the employee's point of view. There's just so many times that things will come up and you're just like, okay, so I'm going to do this. No, get feedback from the employees. If that's through a survey, if that's through a focus group, if that's through, you know, maybe you have small ERGs or a small group of like employee um, employees that do events for the company, or maybe you have some employees employees that's been there for a long time or maybe you have employees that are brand new use a small group of your population to get feedback and work your changes with those data that you get from getting that information from your employees so most times what you should do is make sure that when someone starts you want to do like a 30-day checkup or a 30-day survey and then you want to do like a 90-day survey and then maybe a six-month survey find out how things go in the beginning was training good was onboarding good was learning about their benefits good was getting acclimated in their office space or their office environment good like find out what's working or not working from the beginning gather that data and then based on what they're telling you is good or not make changes based on that so you want to do the same thing if they've been with the organization for a super long time so if they've been with the organization for a super long time maybe you only want employees that's been with the organization for five or ten years now if you're just starting brand new with this then you probably want to do a full-fledged survey with all employees but focus groups are so helpful. So if you get all employees that have been there for quite some time, your questions are going to be tailored to the tenure. What have they learned over time? Have they felt like they've had career advancement? Do they feel like the company's transparent? What are some of their pain points that they absolutely can do without? And what are some of the things that have made them stay for five or ten years? So you definitely want to gather that data and make upcoming changes based on that. And we all know as HR directors, you're going to get complaints all the time. Sometimes they're formal complaints. Sometimes they're informal complaints. Sometimes it's just body language. Sometimes it's just a reply in an email that went wrong. Maybe there's a department meeting that didn't go well in some other department. And so what you should do is use those complaints and look back over them. Are they all talking about the same thing? Or are they talking about different things? Are they all narrowing on a certain person, a certain department, a certain part of the business? Go ahead and focus on that to see where you should make some changes. Too many times HR directors make changes and we don't even take the employees into consideration. I'm going to just be real. That's why folks like me as an HR director because I pay attention to the employees. HR directors get ready because when you go to make changes that benefit the employees, the employees will love you. You have to make sure that you have C-suite buy-in. So if that CEO or those other VPs aren't really feeling your changes, you're probably going to get some bite back because I will tell you, I did. Now what you want to do is look at the company overall. Are there any repetitive workers' comp issues? Are there any safety issues? You want to look at things that employees probably are not going to complain about. They're probably not going to answer on a survey. But you know it impacts your insurance. It impacts your organization as a whole. And it really is unexpected. Expected, right so you want to avoid those so you want to make sure that you're looking at issues for the company or for the employee on behalf of them and make changes based on that now another way that HR directors suck is that they lose track of the company's mission vision and values if your company does not have a mission vision and values then you might want to look at working for another company I worked for a company that didn't have one it was totally implementing different systems and different processes and I was like we don't have direction give us some mission vision and values most companies have them so when they have a mission vision and values make sure that you make your changes according to those because at the end of the day your c-suite is 
always going to buy into it. Your CEO is going to love it because you're helping them stay focused on what their mission is. Because most times that's the first thing that's in their mind. Like I created this company for this, or we started this initiative for that. And when you create things that work on behalf of the employees that benefits the companies, you get everybody agreeing and then you no longer accept. So whenever you're making those changes and it's not based on the company's mission and vision and values, then you're making them based on yourself. Let's be real. Are you planning on being with that company until it dissolves? Which you can't. You're human. Companies exist for hundreds of years. If you're not planning on living for hundreds and thousands of years, then you're not going to be there the whole time. So don't make changes based on what works just for you. Make changes based on what works for the organization as a whole. Think about what your changes can do for the organization in the next two years, in the next five years, in the next ten years. And say, this is going to be a good change because... I'm building the foundation for the company's overall success. There was one time that I worked at an organization and they did not have an employee handbook. Employees were in my office all the time. After they got comfortable with me, they realized that I truly knew HR. I knew what I was doing. And I was a homegirl. You know, you can come and have a talk with me. Then they always would come and talk to me. And so many of those issues, I was like, if I had a handbook, I could give them all the right same uniform answers. I didn't have an employee handbook. At the end of the day, not only was I saving myself from having employees come into my office every single time the most minuscule thing happened, but I was already directing managers and how to manage their team because they all can go to one book to say, this is how we do it. It's almost like a SOP for a lack of better terms, right? And then the CEO loved it because you can use it for years and years on end. And when you go out there and you bid for other companies or you bid for large packages or large projects, then you can say, this is how our company operates. Those are your employee handbook. A lot of times it has company information in, in it too. And so it kind of helps you seal the deal. That's just an example of how you want to make a change that works for the organization, that is a foundational change that lets it just go off into existence for a super long time because you've made an amazing change. A lot of times when HR directors lose track of the company's mission, vision, and values, they make malicious changes based on their moods. An employee pissed them off. So now they decided, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. No, 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 no. Don't make changes based on being upset in that moment. Take some time, reflect on what happened, reflect on where you could have done something differently, reflect on maybe managing that problem a little differently, and then see if any of those things make an impact. If it doesn't, then you want to wait until your mood calms down, you're no longer upset, you're no longer frustrated, and then decide what can I do to benefit this situation. And so I guess it kind of goes into just uh, directors become, you know, people who make changes on personal changes, right? So it's totally nothing to do with the organization, everything to do with what they want to see happen. Now they've totally missed track of the mission, vision, and values. And they're like, but I always run my department this way. And I always do this. And this has worked for me for the last 10 years. Well, if you haven't been with that organization for the last 10 years, you probably should evaluate if this is matching the company's mission, vision, and values. Another way that HR directors suck is because they make changes while they're frustrated with their learning curve. You haven't taken the time to truly learn the organization. You just been there for two months and you're ready to start changing this process and that process. I'm with this person, I'm gonna do this. Sometimes you gotta sit back and see how things flow. If that company's been in existence for 50, 60 years, 100 years, then they have something that works. So let me see what's working. Let me evaluate what's happening with the situation. Let me see where I can improve it. Or let me see where it's failing and why is it failing and what parts of it is failing. How can I implement a change to make it for the better? Maybe I should research some things. Maybe I should talk to a few people. Maybe I should sit back in a few meetings and see what is it about this situation is changing? If you have a good quality department, they can help you with process mapping and that can tell you where some areas are at fault or some areas are really redundant or maybe some areas are just not so beneficial for the organization. But too many times we get so frustrated with our learning curve and we don't even realize that we're frustrated with our learning curve. We just think, ah, oh, I need to make a change. No, you need to sit back and learn. So as soon as you sit back and learn, then you know how to make a change. You're more frustrated because you don't know. Use your senior employee. Use the, the company's 
past history of information, whatever records they may have, and look at that information and see what could truly help you in this situation. Was it something that they were doing really, really good and it kind of fell astray? Maybe someone changed. Maybe someone left. Maybe someone started an initiative and no one really supported it, but it really was a good initiative. And so look at what information you have to help ease your learning curve. And then when you learn more, then you're able to make changes better. And another thing is sometimes we think HR is the same everywhere. HR is just not the same everywhere. And so instead of us just trying to put on our HR hat, sometimes we truly need to learn an organization. That's going to be your best bet. Every organization I've worked in, every industry I've worked in, if it's been hospitality, if it's been healthcare, if it's been organ and tissue donation, if it's been the tech industry, if it's been a B2B space, I always sit back and say, let me learn this organization. I have truly taken time to where I sat in meetings that I totally did not belong, didn't need to be there, told everyone, hey, I'm just a fly on the wall. I sit back and I watch how the meeting goes. Is everyone jiving? Who are the big players? Who are the people making decisions? Who are the people they're listening to? Who are they relying on? And that's telling me where I can get information from to make organizational changes. I would also go out to different departments and do like a day in the life with someone. I want to see what is your day to day like. So when they come in with that workers comp claim, they come in with that employee relations issue. I already have an idea of what the organizational setup is. So when you're telling me, well, I walked here and I did this and I did that. Now I can say, well, it shouldn't take you that long to get there or you got there really quick or what have you. And that helps me make that story for them. And it always makes sense. And then in the end of the day, always make a really good change that works for the organization because I have helped my learning curve by learning the organization and seeing how my HR skills can fit into that. So another thing that we like to do is, and, and I'm saying we loosely, <laughs> but another thing that we like to do is when we get frustrated with something, particularly as HR directors, we will vent with people. You've only been there for like two months. I like them. And you start just talking trash with them. That person has probably been sitting there for the last two months trying to watch your moves because they're trying to figure out how to how to hurt your operation, how to hurt your success. And you have no clue. Now you get six months a year, two years in the game, and you're like, I cannot stand them. I don't know why I like them to begin with. Take your time. You're rushing your learning curve. Take your time to learn people. Take your time to learn their mannerisms. Take your time to learn how they run their department. Take your time to learn how they fit into the organization. Are they bringing value to the organization? Don't run and vent with everybody. Vent with your girlfriend at home. Vent with your husband at the house. Vent with your wife. Whatever else you got to do. But don't rush to vent with your coworkers. Now, one of the top things that HR directors like to do, and I don't think they intend on doing this. I've noticed that this happens primarily with smaller organizations. I've worked with companies that have had anywhere from 20 or 60 employees um, to companies that have had, you know, 4,000 or 2,000. And so I've seen a good range, right? And I noticed that this happens with the smaller organizations with like 100 employees or less. A lot of times they'll show their emotions. HR directors need to hold back them emotions, honey. You don't know how people are receiving them. You don't know who you might be offending. You don't know who might have seen you roll that eye or shrug those shoulders or get that relaxed posture when someone's feeling like they're giving a really good presentation. You always have to be aware of your emotions, your mannerisms, and how you're projecting your reaction because I will tell you that that will ease your learning curve when folks are a little lost on which side of the fence you're on. If they're not sure if you're there for them or them or them or them, then a lot of times, a lot of people will bring you information. So don't show your emotions too early. Make sure that you build relationships with folks, that you get to know folks, that you see them in various different environments and situations, and then decide if this is someone that you should safely show your emotions with. No one says should, you shouldn't be happy now, because I'm always happy. I always come through, hey, y'all, hey, y'all, hey. Hence the name for HR. I always make sure that I try to learn names, if not, I at least learn faces. I try to remember if they have kids and how's the husband and what should, you know, I also have a Shih Tzu and I would do, do minor conversations until I find a comfort level. And most times through that, I'm going to pick up on other details as well. Is this person always working super hard? Am I always hearing their name in a room where they're not? Things are going to pop up and that's going to let me know if I should be comfortable with them or not. 
And you as the HR director need to do the same. Hold back those emotions, but still be nice. Be a, be someone that has an open door policy. Be someone that is easily accessible. Be someone that is responsive. But when it's a negative emotion, particularly, hold back from it. Another thing on the flip side is don't show too much excitement for someone when you really didn't show as much excitement for someone else. Don't forget that at the end of the day, HR directors are neutral people. We work on behalf of the organization and on behalf of the employees. And not all the time that jives, right? It should be where in an organization, everyone works together really well. It just doesn't happen all the time. I'm sorry to say it. I'm here to bust your bubble. It doesn't happen. So sometimes you're literally that person in the middle of the employee and the organization, and you're supposed to be neutral. So just keep that in mind. So the last way that these HR directors suck is that they will lose sight of their target. They miss opportunities and they simply overthink strategies. Don't forget to use your employees whenever you're thinking about those strategies. Use that data from them. Use their interactions. Use their daily work. Make sure that you have your strategic partners who can help you with those strategies as well. And make sure that above all else, remember the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. Too many times we overthink these strategies and we're like, I should do this and I should do that and I should do this. No, no, no. Sometimes it just it's not that detailed. Data will tell the story for you. So wherever you can gather data, gather that data and make it work for you. That will do all the strategizing for you. It's going to paint a whole picture that you can't even change. So use that data to make whatever strategies you're doing work for you so that you don't miss opportunities. And at the end of the day, you always want to make sure that you don't drift away from the company's goals and the company's targets. So, you know, a long time ago when I first started, and I can't say a long time ago, I mean, it hadn't been that long, but when I first started doing my HR videos and, and doing this channel, I used to always kind of give some takeaways at the end. And I kind of drifted away from that. Not sure why I did that. And this video, I definitely want to give you some real hard takeaways. So I hope that you've made it this long. And if you did, I thank you. But let me tell you something. Titles doesn't always equal money. So don't always feel like I want to be an HR director. Sometimes so many people who are not HR directors, probably never been HR directors, make just as much money as an HR director. So don't think I want to be an HR director. I want to be an HR manager. No, no, no. Titles doesn't always equal money money. I want you to please remember that. The second thing is if you're not going for money and you just want to be an HR manager because you feel like that's the top of the totem pole, you might be biting off more you can chew. So I'm going to leave you with this factor. Do not jump into a leadership role, particularly an HR director role prematurely. Make sure that you learn all that you can learn. If you've only been an HR generalist for the last two years and that's the only HR job you ever had, you might need a whole lot before becoming an HR manager or HR director. Too many times we jump into that because we just think that's the next level. Honey, you don't know what you're pulling off. Because the responsibility lies on no one except you. People are going to look at you for results. When you haven't had a ton of experience, you haven't really immersed yourself in this, into this knowledge, you probably just pick up this job because it was just easy. Or maybe someone just kind of jumped you into it. Maybe being a leader is not the place you should be. You got to learn. My grandmother used to say, baby, you got to crawl before you walk. Remember to crawl. Sometimes that crawling takes a minute. One thing I will not ever say I regret is being all of those HR positions before becoming an HR leader. I am so happy that I started as an HR assistant, was a specialist, then a journalist, then an assistant manager. Like I'm so happy for those opportunities because it's so great to be an employee before you can lead. It's just helpful. You see a lot more. You don't forget about the employees. You don't forget some of the headaches. It's just helpful. So don't jump into an HR role prematurely. And title does not always mean money. If you guys have made it this far, I thank you so much. Because, Lord, we jumped into some stuff, didn't we? I'm trying to tell you, now, these HR directors suck. But I'm telling you how not to suck. I'm telling you how to get this job and make it well. If I miss something, please leave it in the comments below. I will always, always leave with making sure that I thank you so much watching this video. I'll definitely see you on the next one.